Hi guys, <clears throat> it is now turning into a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in paradise in the banks of Fish Eating Creek where my little squirrely hound is, uh, wants to go flying out of this chair and get that squirrely like that, but there's no chasing the squirrelies in the park. Anyway, it is a gorgeous Friday morning, February 14th, 2020. It is Valentine's Day, and I'm here with my little, uh, my little Valentine Sancho Panza. My name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little Valentine Sancho Panza, and this is Collapse Chronicles, where what we do here on this channel is chronicle the collapse of a planet, and since it is Friday, February 14th, 2020, we are going to do what we do every day, and that's head over to my friends at mongabay.com over to Rhett Butler and the boys and see what's on the minds of Rhett. Now, last week we lost, we had a collapse of global industrial civilization during this roundup, so I'm going to charge ahead. This camera has been acting very strange this week. It just shuts off for no reason. So uh, if the camera shuts off, I'm not starting over. So we better charge ahead through a collapsing planet. And we're going to start down there in the Sorado, uh, the ecosystem you have never heard of in Peru, which some people say is more biodiverse than the Amazon rainforest. Our first story of the day, <coughs> Sorado in crisis. There you go, Cerrado in crisis. Brazil Cerrado is one of the most biodiverse tropical savannas on the planet with aquifers and rivers vital to Brazil's urban water supply, but more than half of the biomes, two million square kilometers, have been cleared and the rest is vanishing fast. The Cerrado today serves as a soaring, serves a soaring global demand for soy used as animal feed for livestock in Brazil, Europe, the United Kingdom, and elsewhere. There you go. Uh, that's what's going on down there in the Cerrado. Uh, and is this somebody else who, uh, has been murdered? No, this guy, this environmental defender has actually not been murdered yet. Mika Ganobai, uh, going up against the, uh, oil palm plantations. I'm going to give Mika... Well, will Mika survive the year? Mika going out on Manga Bay, calling out the oil palm plantations. Mika, maybe, I don't know if Mika's male or female, but Mika has a target on his or her head now that he or she has done a video on Manga Bay. Uh, okay. Well, I already had a... Uh, uh, well, somebody in the Doomosphere somewhere already had a video on this about how the pangolin trade may have played a part in the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, new findings suggest that the coronavirus that has led to more than 1,000 deaths could have been transmitted to humans uh, via pangolins. Uh, these shy nocturnal animals are considered the most trafficked mammals in the world. Despite a global trade ban, China remains a major destination for pangolins, which are killed for their meat and because their scales are used in traditional Chinese uh, medicine. Uh, and <clears throat> then, as has been mentioned elsewhere in the Doomosphere, you know, for people who think this as I do, 
that this irony, this karmic irony, that the most trafficked animal in the world is responsible for uh, for setting off, which may or may not be a pan global pandemic. I don't think it will be. But before you celebrate that ironic uh, karmic payoff, now what's happened is these pangolin huggers are saying it's just become open season on pangolins. If there, if any link is connected between, they're not even going to bother, you know, killing them for the wildlife trade and shipping them to China. Just anyone who sees a pangolin, even who wouldn't have killed a pangolin last week, is going to kill it this week. Pangolins are more screwed than they have ever been. Okay. We do we have some. Uh, some uh, early deforestation totals for 2019 coming in. This is the findings according to the moderate the monitoring of the Andean Amazon project. Uh, okay, their figures project surprisingly that deforestation in 2019 tapered slightly or held steady in four of the five Amazon countries included in the study. This is going in direct conflict with every single manga based story that I read in 2019. Uh, they're saying, according to this one, that Bolivia uh, rose. But this is the, now, again, I'm totally confused here whether, I don't know of Brazil, since Brazil doesn't have any Andean Amazon, my guess, th this is talking about th the very western fringes of the Amazon, where it you know, on the east slope of the Andes, uh, that beautiful, not down in the hole, in the bowl, uh, Bolivia's uh, portion rose, and the rest of them held steady. I would put a big question mark by that one. I don't, I, I don't believe it for one second that in any of the five countries but that border between the Andes and the Amazon rainforest tapered or even held steady. If I had a BS detector button, I would be slamming it right now. So anyway, you know, this is my one of my few criticisms with Manga Bay is how they just spit out these reports. And they don't do any, Rhett doesn't, apparently Rhett Butler doesn't have a BS detector button because he just runs these reports straight and doesn't analyze and, and he lets you figure it out for yourself. So Rhett, if you're letting me figure it out for myself, I'm hitting the BS detector button. Anyway... Um, here is cheering on, sending out thanks to the <clears throat> environmental journalists uh, now risking their lives for uh, bringing out this news. Let's all cheer on the environmental journalists working for Manga Bay and anyone else uh, dedicating their lives to bringing this news to the planet that nobody wants to hear. More and more of them ending up a in prison like this Manga Bay guy did for two months or getting a bullet through their head. Okay, let's go look at disaster amplifying gold mines sprouting up inside Indonesian National Park. Yes, the Indonesian government has begun cracking down on illegal gold mines in a national park outside Jakarta, 
blamed for exacerbating floods and landslides last month. Uh, it won't be an easy task with only 26 of the nearly 400, 26 of the nearly 400 illegal gold mines inside this protected area shut down so far. A day's worth of mining can yield nearly the same pay as the monthly minimum wage, which officials say will continue to make it an attractive livelihood for many people. Yes. Okay, wow. As long as we're in Indonesia, you will not believe this, guys. This new investigation reveals loopholes for illegal shark fishing in Indonesia. Hmm, I see this is why I love Manga Bay and Rep Butler. If if Manga Bay was not here to explain to me the the loopholes to allow illegal shark fin uh, fishing in Indonesia to continue, I would never have been able to figure this out for myself. An undercover reporting initiative by Indonesian media has highlighted loopholes that allow protected sharks to be fished and sold abroad. Huh. Shark products, mostly fins, end up being exported to China. Hong Kong, Singapore. Sarah, have you enjoyed any shark fin soup recently? Japan and Thailand. Yep. Indonesia is home to more than a quarter of the world's 400 known shark species, a fifth of which are endangered. All right, we have a freight train barreling through the swamp as a backdrop. I absolutely love when I'm doing these rants, when we have a freight train. Can we get a whistle blow? Let's get a whistle blow for the shark fin soup eaters. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Guys, I have a lot on my plate and I don't trust this camera. So uh, let's go back to the Serato. I'm skipping over a lot of these stories, guys. I can only hit a few of these stories. Now we're, we were down there in the Serato looking at how habitat destruction. Now we're looking at uh, cars, you know, roadkill of the giant anteaters in Serato. Uh, let's see. Uh, between January 2017 and December 2019, 725 giant anteaters were, were brought in dead uh, being hit, but that, you know, obviously that's a small portion. 725 critically endangered giant anteaters being run over by cars and probably freight trains. Um, you know, the Serato is served by a large truck fleet. Yes. Findings indicate that roadkill pretty much uh, can cut the growth of the anteater population in half, I bet. The possible extinction of giant anteaters could have wide-reaching ramifications, including on the agriculture that is driving them to extinction. This is another karmic payoff. Since the species plays such an important role in controlling insect pests. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> All right. Here's going over to Sri Lanka. You know, you see this story uh, repeated so many times about where there's this local civil war, this uh, 
you know, all of these humans uh, in war with each other, that the animals, particularly the, the reptiles, are enjoying. They are, their populations are actually recovering where there is a civil war, where people are nervous about settling down and doing, you know, and they're slash and burn agriculture and whatnot, that our fellow earthlings would rather deal with a civil war than humans just going about their, their daily lives. Uh, now, of course, in the, 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 the uh, soldiers also, they need to eat, so we do have some bushmeat trade. All right, let's just look at the big picture in Indonesia. And anyone who does not understand the dots between this story and the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, I don't have time to explain it to you now. Experts see minefield of risk as Indonesia seeks environmental deregulation. The Indonesian government is pushing for the swift passage of more than 1,200 amendments to at least 80 existing environmental laws, which are already a joke, an Indonesian environmental law, in a bid to deregulate the economy and boost investment. Chief among the proposed changes is the scrapping of environmental impact assessments and environmental permits as prerequisites to be issued for various kinds of, pro of projects. Other amendments would get rid of criminal charges for businesses violating environmental Regula regulations, depriving indigenous communities of a say in projects, and redesignating forest areas, which would allow illegal plantations and mines to whitewash their operations. Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right, we have new details on dams that hold mining waste. A new database called the Global Tailings Portal pulls together information on 1,700 dams that store waste known as tailings from around the world. Uh, so... Uh, it doesn't tell us what they're finding, but you can imagine what they're finding. Anyway, uh, and I've got to move ahead. Uh, all right, the 2020 fire season is already nearing in Indonesia as President Joko Widodo. That, that, you know, Joko Widodo is the single greatest name for a planet-eating president in history. There's no way The Onion could come up with naming one of these corrupt planet-eating dictators Joko Widodo. Yes. Uh, acting like he's like Joko Widodo is going to get tough on uh, on oil palm, people setting fire to the forest. Oh yeah. Okay, you will not believe this. We have a an an interview with Gabon's with Gabon's environment minister telling us that ecotourism is not enough to develop a country. Hmm. <clears throat> Do you think so? There are limits to the potential of ecotourism to meet development needs, says Gabon's environment minister. Yes. Uh, there you go. So uh, he is pushing for controlled selective logging. Controlled selective logging 
of Gabon's rainforest. The environment minister. Okay, we got ecotourism, but we need some of that controlled, selective logging in Gabon. Let me tell you what a, a controlled, selective logging project in Gabon is going to look like. Okay, from Gabon to Sumatra. Hmm, you will not believe this. In Sumatra, authorities fight a resurgence of illegal gold mining. That implies there was ever a, what's the opposite of resurgence? Desurgence? Yes. Authorities in Sumatra say they are boosting efforts to crack down on illegal gold mining. Hmm, there you go. Illegal mines are scattered throughout the province, including inside ostensibly protected areas. Yes, where miners claim to have the backing of corrupt officials. Do you think so? Okay, here is the deforestation numbers from Brazil. That was a very uh, confusing story earlier. So let's now and look at that Brazil, which does not have any frontage against the Andes Mountains. Deforestation in Brazil continues its torrid pace into 2020. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon continues to rise, according to data from Brazil's own National Space Research Institute. Yes, Brazil's own government figures show that deforestation during January 2020 uh, amounted to 284 square kilometers or 110 square miles. This is an area 83 times the size of New York Central Park and the loss this year in the first month of this year is more than twice that registered in January of 2018. And guys, you got to remember this is the Brazilian government's own data. You need to put a huge asterisk by any 110 square miles. January's official numbers put deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon at over 9,000 square miles for the past 12 months, an 85% increase over last year. The various data suggests that forest destruction in the Brazilian Amazon is currently pacing about double last year's rate, and last year's rate pretty much doubled the year before. All right, we have a giant music festival being planned for uh, a Kenyan national park. Yes, this is Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate National Park is getting ready to have a big ass throwdown. Yes, the Kenyan Wildlife Service defends this and similar events, saying the park is, quote, an activity based conservation and recreation facility. Close quote. Uh, Hell's Gate has also been heavily impacted by geothermal power generation projects. Anybody who thinks that this geothermal energy it does not eat the planet, you know, geothermal energy. I don't even, I don't think I've ever done a rant uh, on the myth of geothermal being a green environmental friendly uh, practice. Okay, what is Jair Bozo Nero up to this week? The single biggest planet eater on planet Earth. What is Bozo Nero up to? Bozo Nero sends Congress a bill to open indigenous lands to mining and fossil fuels. Yes. 
President Jair Bozo Nero has long pledged to open Brazil's indigenous reserves in the Amazon and elsewhere to commercial mining, oil and gas exploration, cattle ranching, agribusiness, new hydroelectric dam projects, and tourism. I guess he's talking about disaster tourism. There is no better place for disaster tourism than the, uh, the Brazilian Amazon. And this week, he sent a bill to Congress that would do just that. Yes, there you go. Uh, the legislation would also allow the use of genetically modified seeds in agricultural projects, a practice previously banned because of the danger of contaminating native seeds. There you go. Bozo Nero called his new project, quote, a dream, but it has already met with withering criticism from indigenous organizations who see it as a nightmare. One of these uh, indigenous organizations calls the bill, quote, a death project, which will, under the mask of false good intentions, effectively authorize the invasion of their lands. All right, what is going on with the Bumblebee Tuna Corporation? Tuna supply chains under scrutiny as Bumblebee changes hands. <clears throat> All right, so a Taiwanese company has bought the U.S., the now former U.S. company, <coughs> Bumblebee Foods, for almost a billion dollars. Uh, another American corporation going to the Asians. We were just talking about this, my buddy and I, a couple of nights ago, how nobody is talking about uh, this. Uh, <clears throat> The new president, Max Chow, <coughs> emphasized his company's mutual commitment to sustainability and global fisheries conservation. All right, thank you, Mr. Chow. Yes, but differing definitions of what constitutes sustainability in the complex tuna industry as well as concerns over workers' rights, suggest there is work to do to build confidence in the environmental pedigree of the cutely cartooned tuna cans on your supermarket shelves. Yep, 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 more whale strandings. Here, I just have to run through these pretty quick. We have whale strandings. We have rhino poaching. Oh, God. Uh, we have in this story, which I've already mentioned, about World Wildlife Fund bailing out of Indonesia. Uh, recreational fishing increasingly targeting sharks and rays concerning researchers. Gee, guys, this shit uh, goes on and on. Here is this latest story about the Amazon reaching this tipping point. Escalating firestorms could turn Amazon from carbon sink to source. I've been saying for the past two years and uh, more and more, and eventually the entire Amazon is going to tip over. A new study finds that the Brazilian Amazon could be moving from being a net carbon storehouse to a carbon source, putting the regional and global climate at great risk, intensifying wildfires, could contribute to that shift happening by mid-century. Um, 
I've who was it that I interviewed? Good Lord, uh, which I have interviewed so many people. One of these Amazon researchers that I interviewed this year, he really explained all of this. I really wish I could remember the name of the man to uh, refer you to if you want to understand this whole uh, debate about rainforests going from carbon sinks to carbon sources. Uh, researchers uh, use models to show that an increasingly hot, dry Amazon climate coupled with deforestation could trigger burning, could trigger wildfires burning up to 16% of Brazil's southern rainforest by 2050, releasing up to 17 billion metric tons of carbon uh, dioxide. The models show Amazon fires will continue intensifying due to more frequent heat and drought conditions caused by global warming and as rampant deforestation due to agribusiness expansion dries out the understory and creates more flammable forest edges. Uh, of great concern, the study found that fires will not just impact the edge of forest, but intact forest deep inside indigenous res reserves and other conserved areas. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but let's end up in Easter Island. I cannot think of a better place to wind up today's Collapse Chronicles uh, roundup than on the collapsed Easter Island, where we see fiscal meltdown at Easter Island Park drives rift among islanders. Yes. Uh, anyway, this is a pretty uh, boring article about some fight uh, over the funding of the Easter Island National Park. The conflict has divided residents, has resulted in a mob, a mob beating in a courtroom set on fire. Anyone who wants to see Mad Max in action, I guess just return to Easter Island where we have a, a new collapse on Easter Island inside a national park. And uh, anyway, guys, I have to wrap up this week's Manga Bay Roundup rant of this collapsing planet. And uh, I got to pack up my gas sucking truck and my little trailer and head back to my brand new piece of property in Florida to survive the collapse of uh, whatever. And if you did enjoy this Manga Bay Roundup, please give Rhett Butler your thumbs up. If you did not appreciate what Rhett had to say, uh, give it a thumbs down. And oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that actually their lead off story was that they're having a YouTube drive that uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel and uh, they're getting ready to hit 2,000 subscribers so Manga Bay is halfway to Collapse Chronicles now but they're making a, a, a subscriber drive to 5,000 subscribers so when you finish subscribing to Collapse Chronicles please go over to Manga Bay's YouTube channel and subscribe to it and uh, with that, get out there and enjoy Valentine's Day in the collapse while you still can. Send a Valentine to Mother Earth today and wish her luck. Tell her, tell your mother you love her. Bye guys. Well, you're not chasing the squirrelies in the park. No squirrely chasing in the park. Why don't you do it? Bye, guys. Mm.
It is a fine looking day.